This Full of Vengeance just dropped on Netflix. What can Wu Assassin fans expect from this film? I think what they can expect is just a roller coaster of action from beginning to end. We just cut straight to the meat. Um, we don't take ourselves so seriously. Um, the story is simple. Um, it's in the title. It's a revenge story. And um, it's about a group of friends coming together, a group of brothers coming together, going to Bangkok and just avenging the death of uh, one of their closest. And um, yeah, just I, I'd say, you know, it's a very enjoyable popcorn flick. And I feel like the replay value for this movie is uh, very high. And I am really excited for people to just be entertained from beginning to end. It has quite the transformation from the, from the series to the film. And there's more physicality this time around. How did that change your preparation and mindset as you dove back into this character? Uh, you know, jumping into this character more physically aware was so interesting for for Tommy. I feel like Tommy just in general and just me as an actor, I feel like I'm very kinesthetic and, and physical in nature. And so being able to embody that finally in a character who is just wanting to seek revenge for his sister, um, I, I feel like it. Uh, I was able to exude that uh, in my performance. And, um, you know, it's just, it's just interesting. It's interesting doing action and, and, and having to embody story within yourself. Cause we can, we can all do choreography. We can all learn specific steps and moves, but unless like there is something else underlying within the character, I feel like it elevates the performance. And I also do feel like all the characters in this story, since we've, um, already gone through a, a first season are, uh, capable of bringing that out. You know, Tommy's arc in the series is, is quite dark. And for you as an actor, how did you create the space for yourself to dive into those kind of more emotional moments? I mean, I just really thought about uh, the circumstances of this character, you know, and, and throughout the first season, he's just really, he just really believes the, the things that people say about him. You know, he has this idea that he's a fuck up. And the more people say it to him, the more he believes it. You know, it isn't until like he realizes that wait a minute, I didn't do what he didn't do what he thought he did in the first season until he's like, he actually sees like a light at the end of the tunnel where he actually feels like he can actually, um, I don't know, help out his, his, uh, his, um, his friends. And um, he feels like there's purpose in his life um, once he releases from guilt in his past. And so I think as uh, an actor building on just, being less than and being um, viewed as as nothing, just at the bottom of the totem pole gives him a lot of room to transform. And I think the transformation really truly takes place in this next movie. And there's a draw dropping uh, fight scene that happens at the hotel. I'm curious if you've seen the final product and what was it like filming that scene in particular? Man, it was, uh, it was cool, man. It, it, I think that's like the first scene where we actually see Tommy like um, yeah. just get super vicious. And um, <laughs> I've never uh, filmed fight scenes before. And so they were doing, we were shooting, we, we were all shooting the whole, um, that whole hectic scene uh, together, but then they were going in close they were, they were going in super close on in specific individuals, but I thought the whole time I had to just go in the whole time. So I wasted so much energy and I was the last person to, to, to get a close up on in that fight. And by the end, I was just like, man, I should have um, withheld my energy, but I still feel like it, it, it played out correctly. Um, because of like what you know what what the character is going through it's just such an intense fight and it's it's just fun to it, it's fun to see tommy um get into it get in on the action as you were saying earlier at the center of this film is this brotherhood what's one surprising fact about each of your brothers that fans would be surprised to learn um I feel like I feel like as we um, follow these characters, we realize that they're all just very vulnerable characters. You know, we come off like really strong and we put up this front and we have this facade. But as a as the story unfolds, we just realize that, you know, they, they all are on the same mission to to avenge the death of Jenny. But um, 
you know, like all, all their specific, like, you know, each person has like a specific downfall. And then it's interesting to see, like, um, it's just interesting to see them open up um, in a vulnerable way. And I feel like once they do that, and that's when they can actually come together and um, uh, figure out what to do. Um, yeah, I think I, I, it, it's, it's, there, there are a lot of funny moments throughout the, the movie that I really enjoy. And um, I think everyone just did a good job. I mean, we all had like a, it's just so fun acting with uh, Eco and Lewis. It's, uh, it's, a, it's, it's a fun dynamic between the three yeah. of us. Yeah, yeah, because we're all so different. It definitely comes off on this uh, on the screen. I know you also have new cast members joining this season. What was it like working with them? How did you guys build that bond during this pandemic? Mm-hmm. I mean, you know what? Maybe the pandemic actually helped us get closer because I, I feel like with something like that, it just, um, you know, it, it makes us more appreciative of the fact that we can actually work, especially in, in a place like, like Thailand. It felt like we were just having so much fun. It was like a vacation, like a work vacation and just getting to meet, um, um, Pearl Tusi and Francesca Corny. They're such charismatic characters in person. And it, they, they embody that personality in their characters as well. And I feel like they bring something, um, um, just, they bring more adventure to the story. Definitely. And, um, they're just such charming characters and it makes, it, it makes it just so much more interesting than just watching three dudes walking around, you know, just add, these added characters are just a delight, I feel. It's such an exciting time in your career and the industry as a whole, where we get these more inclusive and diverse storytelling. What does it meant to you to be a part of this movement and also share this moment with your friends and family? Um, it feels good to be a part of this movement, man. Like I, I, you know, I, I've always grown up watching, watching movies w- with people that don't look like me. And so um, when I do see people that look like me, it's, it's honestly a little jarring just for myself. And so it's cool to be a part of this movement so that people of the younger generation will be able to watch movies and television shows and just not have that feeling just to be able to be like, oh, this is normal, you know, and also to, um, I don't know, help the younger generation feel like that our Asian American feel like they can do anything, that anything is possible. It doesn't have to be in the entertainment industry. It could be whatever you want to be, you know? And um, I feel like, I feel like just being a representation um, of that caliber, uh, you know, in, on, on a Netflix show is, uh, is important and um, that I do not take for granted. In addition to Fistful of Vengeance, you're also starring in Shell, the series, and you're getting to show off uh, so much depth in your talent. What are the stories and characters that you're most attracted to? I think just characters that, that, that are, are, are dealing with, with something internally, you know, like that's just not sur- surface level. I like characters that have a lot of chaos going on, mm-hmm. you know, like things that are chaotic. Um, I like characters that, that people normally, I guess, normally judge on, on, on the street and normally look down upon, but like playing these characters and make people, making people feel empathetic towards these characters is uh, something that I love doing. And I also just like being a part of a story. If, if someone is really passionate about telling a specific story and they want me to be a part of it, like I am, I'm just game, you know, um, especially just, I think just being Asian American and existing on, on a, on a screen is already enough in itself. So like, you know, it's funny because like in the end, it's like, like I'll do anything, man. Just, just me looking the way that I am and playing this character is already just already says something already says so much more yeah great answer yeah. And, and then since the, the last time that we spoke you also stepped into the director's chair what did you learn from that experience that you've now been able to apply to your work on screen um i mean i haven't really directed anything super crazy but just like small like small a small project here and there but um you know, it's cool because as a, as an actor, you sort of know how you want to be spoken to. And so just taking that and just asking the right questions to actors and helping them figure things out themselves is I feel like the most um, um, important thing to, in in creating something collaborative, Um, which I feel like um, most directors that I've worked with have been doing. Um, So it's like, yeah. So just, uh, 
being on sets where I can work with directors that ask me like um, amazing questions that make me think about my character more and help me develop things um, has helped me um, do that as well. You've done so much already in your young career. As you look ahead to like the next five, 10, 15 years, is there a dream role that you would love to bring uh, to life on the screen? N nothing, nothing specific, but you know, I definitely do want to feel what it would feel like to lead a show, you know, to be like, to, to be instrumental in, you know, to be, to be a main focus of, of a TV show and to, to like, to see what that feels like and to be able to be a leader in that kind of way um, is something that I um, aspire to do. And um, yeah, I want to, I want to make my own movies too, like down the line. What advice would you give to aspiring creatives, especially of like Asian descent that are looking to make their way into the industry? If you could give them a piece of advice. I would say just to not think about this journey as something that's like fantastical because i feel like when people uh try to get into the um creative industry they feel like man this is such an unattainable thing but if you look at it as if like as if it's someone trying to be a doctor or someone trying to be a lawyer what are the steps that this person needs to to go through to become that um then you will get there it is a career you know in the end it's a job so i think as long as you think about it that way and keep attacking it in that kind of fashion, you will get there. I mean, for me, it's like, if, if someone was like, go be a doctor, I'm like, man, in my head, I'm like, that is impossible. But I will be like, I, I, I can sit down and be like, okay, these are the things that I need to do. And it's the same with uh, entering the, the entertainment industry, you know, just get really good at what you're trying to do and just, um, just go for it. Yeah, I got two more questions yeah. for you. You've talked in previous interviews and, and during this conversation as well that you never saw yourself represented on screen. When did you start noticing that shift in the industry and during those more challenging times when there were less roles for Asian Americans or Asians in general, how are you able to persevere? I think um, um, in, the, in the beginning of my career when there was less representation, I had to really tell myself that I, I couldn't think of it as a handicap. I had to think of it as something that made me stand out. You know, mm. we have to change our, um, our perceptions about these situations, you know, like we, you know, I, I could have sat there and complained that I was the like, uh, man, I'm the only Asian guy coming into this room. There's like a bunch of white dudes. Or I could just be like, man, I'm the only one that stands out. They're the only one that they're, I'm the only one that they're going to obviously remember because I look different, you know? And so it's just changing uh, our paradigm about um, the situation um, in order to continue to uh, move forward. And, but, but now, now that there's just like so many more Asian writers, so many more Asian people, like, in, in, in the entertainment industry, like behind the camera, in front of the camera, it's just amazing to be a part of. And to be honest, even when I watched uh, Crazy Rich Asians for the first time, I was it was jarring for me to be in the yeah. movie here and to see that many Asians. I'm like, oh, this is, you know, I got emotional watching that movie. And I think from then on, um, I'm actually happy that when I see representation on the screen more often, I'm just, I don't feel anything. Like I feel, gr but it's like, I feel yeah. good that I don't feel like this is like, like rare, Yeah, you know? Yeah. And that. so, yeah, it's cool, man. Just even in commercials, just like seeing Asian people on commercials, even like, you know, TV shows, movies and everything.